way to say it is if you want to play in this league, you got to be able to do those kind of things. So, you know, we feel good about our guys. They've, they've worked hard and, you know, we'll hopefully have success with it. Well, you know, in this league, I, I think that, it, you know, max max protection sometimes is a not always as easy as it seems. You know, they give you a lot of looks. This team's got good rushers, and they give you multiple looks. And, uh, you know, dealing with the noise and trying to be able to get everybody on the same page is always difficult enough. So, you know, we work, work hard on it during the week to try to prepare for it, and we feel like our guys will be ready on Sunday. Tying up the Georgia or Thursday. <laughs> for last week. Really, really, ultimately, the timing was just tough, is what it came down to. Um, you know, so, like I said, I was honored to be considered for that, but it just couldn't work out from everything else going on. Plus, I didn't want to, you know, the focus on our season and what we're doing was important. Can you say if you turned down an offer or you just pulled out? Um, it doesn't really matter, does it, at this point? So, I'm happy for them. They've got a coach, and, you know, we're doing well, so everything's good. Thank you. Do you think the Thursday night thing is a good thing going on for someone that seems like they have a pretty good handle on how to deal with it? Real fast, quick when you have to travel. Um, you know, it's it's tough because, like right now, it's uh, it's Tuesday, but I couldn't tell you what day it is just because you're so focused on trying to get ready. There's so much you got to get done in such a short period of time that um, you know it is difficult. But the thing I will say is that yes, we do have. A formula for how to prepare you know how you go about doing it when you do the practices what you do meeting time wise what you think you can do it helps that it's a division opponent I think the NFL did a great job with that from the standpoint of you know having somebody that you're semi familiar with plus you know it seems like they're doing it with a lot more um, less travel than across the country but for one of the first years they did this we were in Arizona and we were we played Philadelphia on a Thursday game and that was very difficult so um, you know, going into Kansas City is always tough. They're, they're, they have great fans, and it's a tough place to play. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And your Arizona team in L.A. Kind of flew under the radar for a lot of the season before getting to the Super Bowl. This team kind of did it kind of the same way. Is there, is there a benefit to that? Well, I don't know if there's a benefit to that. I, I think that uh, every team's different. I've been on two teams that have gotten in and uh, have had success when they've gotten in and gotten to the Super Bowl, and it's every one of them is different. Um, you know, I've been on a 15-1 and one team, and we lost in the championship game, so I, I don't know that, you know, other than those guys up in New England who seem to have a pretty good formula for it, I think you just, however you get in, that's the most important thing, and then uh, a lot of it's how you're playing. You know, I think for us, we've, uh, we've played some tough road games. You know, we've gone to some tough places, like if you watched the game last night in Seattle, you know, that was obviously a tough place to play and I think we did a pretty good job of handling that and I think you 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 grow a little bit from that you get a little bit tougher and maybe you can handle those situations and you know going into Pittsburgh um, was like a playoff game a night game where you're the focus so it's more I think about those kind of things helping prepare you for hopefully what's coming do you feel like this will be like Pittsburgh with the playoff atmosphere Oh, no question. I mean, it's like a playoff atmosphere, whether it's the first game or the fifth game or whether it's late in the season like this in a big division game. You know, it's a, it's a great atmosphere. What's your, sorry, what gets shortchanged? Short like well, you know, we're fortunate because um, a lot of times we have guys that are veteran guys for the most part. We ask them to do a lot during the season, and they build up a good base how we operate so we're able to be a little bit more flexible on a short week we can put some things in that we can say hey remember when we did this this is what we did and they have a base point that they can remember so that helps us it's not like this is the first time with some of these guys and you're afraid to put in more than they can handle because I shouldn't say more than they can handle but too much because you know that's that's what's really difficult you know you have to you have to be careful about what you give these guys because it's really you're not going to get a lot of reps during the week preparing. Um, you know, you you, you got to put them in positions where you think they can be successful. But it's it's just you're, it's a little bit unsettling because there's so much that you go through in a week for preparation, and now it's condensed to two days. It makes it hard. What is the most challenging? 
I think what Coach Lynn and what this organization has done a great job is it's recovery of the athletes. I think that's the most important thing. Recovery, recovery of the athletes. You know, I think um, your natural inclination as a coach when you get into one of those situations is to make sure your guys are prepared, and that means more time in meetings, more time on the field. We got to, you know, we got to feel comfortable that we're ready. I think it's more about the physical part of being ready. You know, a lot of it you have to do from a mental standpoint and understand that they've got to be prepared that way. But the biggest thing is the recovery part of it so that they're ready to go Thursday night. That's That, I think, is what's been the biggest revelation about this type of thing. You know, a lot of it is really kind of a combination of, of a lot of things. I think the yoga part, the stretching part, the physical therapy that is done on some of these athletes, whether it's massages, you know, working the lactic acid out of the muscles. Obviously, the, the technical part of it, the therapy that you can get in the training room is important. Our guys, our trainers do a great job of that. Um, every athlete seems to have their own way of preparing, and I think having more abilities to do different things is what's really advanced this, you know, as far as what's, what works for you, how do you prepare, you know, not mentally I'm talking about, but physically, what, you know, those kind of things. With you seeing Eric Berry out there, you make the same leap, do you target him because he hasn't played all week, he's coming up to, or do you say, this is Eric Berry, he's really good? Or well, I, Eric Berry is really good, yeah. and he's got a lot of, you know, he's, if, if you go by what I've said earlier, he's got a lot of built-up knowledge about this game and understands how to play it. And, you know, he can go out there and step out there and play well just because he's done that before. So um, to say we would target him is something that, you know, I, that, that would be, uh, you know, not necessarily something. I, it's hard because you don't know for sure if he's going to play. So if he gets out there and he plays, you know, I certainly respect him as a player because he's a, a darn good football player. And, um, you know, I... I would really like to see him make his debut debut in the week after us, but you know we'll see. I guess. Are the day, these couple of days longer than normal days? Because I mean, your guys getting out of here later <clears throat> because of the compressed schedule. Or no, not really. I mean, they come in later on Monday because yeah. yesterday was the day. I mean, we were talking about the Cincinnati game. You know, just kind of cleaning some things up, and it's hard to think that that was just two days ago. It feels like it was four days ago. And but our players come in later Monday. Today is not a you know an abnormally long day. But like I said, I think the biggest thing is about recovery for them. And of course, uh, the replay ended up benefiting you guys on Sunday. But what's your thoughts on the extension of the rule where now diving is a slide? Um, you know what? I, I think that it's that's a fluid situation. The league is working on a lot of those things and trying to get them right. Obviously, the catch thing has worked out a little bit because you don't hear about that much anymore. And if well, you remember, you don't, you don't and need if, MIT to know what a catch is anymore. Well, I mean, if you just said that last year. Could we have had that same discussion? Because last year, nobody knew what a catch was. So, you know, they've done a good job. The league has done a good job with trying to resolve some of the issues that come up. And I think the fans, you know, have, have played into that. And I think that they're trying to get everything right, and they're doing a good job of it. So, Do you think there needs to be maybe a little more, like, define what giving yourself up is, especially like near the end zone and goal line play? Well, two, the three, I'd answer that in two ways. First of all, that's above my pay grade. And secondly, if I had an opinion, I don't think they would really care. So. <laughs> thanks, Liz. I got to get done. You got it. Uh, thanks, guys. We care. We do. Oh, well, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, it's a great week for us. I mean, the guys are excited. I mean, it's a mixture of getting their bodies back from the game, but also a lot of information. Obviously, you know Kansas City, they do a lot of things offensively, do a lot of things that are challenging for a defense. So in a short week to get those points across to our guys, um, you know, we have played them already, but they've changed since the first game as well. Yeah, he's been good. You know, I think we still look at him every week and try to see where we're going to position him, you know, based on some of the things that a team is doing. So, yeah, but he's been good for us. Uh, I think, uh, I think you know what, we play him the very first game, so we're watching college tape, you know, to see how Mahomes is and see how he reacts to certain things and how he plays the game. And then I think that you can just see that they've got, gained even more confidence with him. 
and allowing him more opportunities to make plays and extend plays. And um, you can just see the trust that he's gained with some of his teammates. Well, I, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, they'll, they'll go through the same things. I think, you know, regardless of that, it'll be an equal playing field. And now we just got to go out there and perform. So, you know, there's, uh, they, they, they're obviously very talented. The ability, as, as far as explosive plays, they're probably the team that has more explosive plays than any team we face. So I think our guys have to be in tune for that, that every play you have to be ready because you don't know when it's going to show up. Well, uh, you know what I think is, uh, what I see is a team that's very committed to the run. It's not a team that's going to go out and throw 70% of the time. They're going to try to keep that balance. And I think that balance is what makes them very effective. You know, some of the things they do offensively in the run game, it forces you to maybe situate people a certain way in order to slow down some of the run schemes and then, you know, the play action off of it. So I think their balance is what's very impressive. Well, he's unique in that um, his, his ability to extend plays, I think, and his arm strength, uh, you know, and I think they incorporate the routes based on his arm strength. And they feel like, you know what, we're going to have very good protection. So some of the routes that maybe the break point is at 10, with this team it's at 17. You know, everything's just a little bit deeper. And I think that's a, the challenge for our defense is to understand this. This is not some of the normal things that we see from week in and week out. And because of his ability to extend the play, some of those shots, you know, turn in not to be 20-yard gains, but for, you know, touchdowns. So I, I think that's what's unique about them, that, uh, you know, they're, they're very challenging offensively. You know what, I haven't watched much of him. I've got great respect for him and know just our guys talking about him, how much of an impact he's had on games, and, and they definitely know where he's at. And, um, you know, he's a guy that's just a really, really good football player. I do know that. And there's some guys like that. You know, for us, like a Desmond King is just a really, really good football player. You know, he might not be 6'3 and 220 in length, but he just makes plays for us. And um, I'm not comparing those two, but that's what I think of him. He's just a really, really good football player. And on top of it, the skill set. Coach, you talked about some players already, but when you talk about Radelski, I guess what makes him such a dangerous player? Well, I mean, when you look at the number of explosive plays, I mean, there's, you know, both him and 10, they're up there around 30 each. You know, so his size, his length, his ability as a route runner, um, you know, is something to deal with. I think that our defense, we just have to have great awareness where those guys are and understand the abilities they have and that the quarterback trusts them greatly. You guys have been pretty effective, though, in limiting LC. Is, does having Derwin be an advantage or even before you had him? I mean, well, I, you know, I think it's, you know, sometimes it's based on their game plan, how they're trying to attack us, what they're trying to do. But I think, you know, it's just having awareness of where he's at. He's going to make his plays. Both those guys are going to make their plays. Our number one objective is to keep these points down. You know, uh, we feel like our offense has the ability week in and week out to score some points. And our job defensively is obviously turnovers, get the ball to our offense, but also to keep that point total down. You know, I know of Coach Reed. We've had conversations before. I just have unbelievable respect for him. Um, his flexibility, you know, over the year, I think his, what, how he looks at his personnel and how he utilizes each skill set, that's been going back for years and how he attacks defenses. One week you'll see this scheme. Another week you see him attack a team this way. And uh, I think he's adjusted well to his personnel. You know, a guy like Patrick Mahomes, you're seeing things this offense do that they didn't do in years past, and it's because of his skill set. And uh, I think that's why I have such great respect for him, not only as a coach, but as a man.
Well, every team is different. They do. They use motions, shifts, um, different types of motions to try to affect the defense. And every team has their philosophy. But I think with Kansas City, you see a piece from everybody. <laughs> you know, so you see it all in one game. You know, the different, different types of motions that they have and how they're trying to get you to get people in positions they're not accustomed to being in. I think that's the big thing with their motions. You, you know, all of a sudden somebody's playing an, a B gap that's not accustomed to playing the B gap. And that's what they do a good job of through their motions and shifts. That said, what do you, where does Derwin need to be mostly effective? Where is the ball on the field? <laughs> Where's the ball? <laughs> no, you know what? We've got a lot of uh, good players that we feel confident. He's just a piece of it. And, um, you know, I think that he's been a guy that when he is around the ball has the ability to make plays. He's, uh, you know, his acceleration, his length, his size, and he loves the game. And we've got a lot of guys that like that. So I think what I appreciate about our group is that, boy, they really are playing well together. You know, and I think that when you have a team that has great camaraderie, great chemistry, it's like adding another Pro Bowl player. And I think that's, that's how our defense feels right now is that, you know, they accept any challenge that comes their way. They're excited about this opportunity, and they trust one another and have great trust. So, you know, it'll be an exciting, exciting opportunity for us. Damian Williams, what do you see out of him now? That he's Who's that? Out? Damian Williams, now with Kareem Hunt out, he had the big touchdown. Today. Yeah. He, you know what? He's, I mean, every week we look at running styles of the running backs. And obviously now that's taking place there with a couple different backs and the running styles that they have, we have to be aware of when he's on the film. His speed, his athleticism, you know, ability to cut and, and jump cut. So he's, he's a guy that uh, we have to be well aware of. I think in their scheme, you know, they just plug another guy in and they roll. And, uh, you know, he's, I think this has been a good move for him. Well, I, I think that, you know, every time you go into a game, you need to understand how can we affect him, you know, and, and he's a tough one to affect because he does extend the play. I think he does a good job of feeling pressure and fade away from pressure and moving around in the pocket to try to, all right, if you're going to bring pressure, if there's any opening that I can extend the play, that's what he's going to do. So I think you got to pick and choose your times, but affecting him, I think, is extremely important. Yeah, it is. It's tough because he can move up in the pocket and get outside the pocket. You know, I think it's not just getting losing contain on the outside. He has the ability to extend the play multiple ways, multiple ways. So I think it's, you know, a good pass rush plan with him when those situations occur. And then, uh, you know, but he makes good decisions and he hasn't been sacked a lot. They've had some pressure on him, obviously. But, uh, you know, that's going to be the challenge for us is make sure we get pressure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, thank you. Have you dealt with certain situations in the past and are you to Yeah. I mean, we kind of keep the same, we've done the same thing. I mean, it's been different. It was a little slightly tweaked, uh, being, you know, uh, who they are. Uh, and for the you know the basic schematics of what they like to do, just like they know that about us. So I think that helps. And then you just you just go uh, find a way to get it in and get prepared and, and be ready to kick it off on Thursday. So with Melvin and Austin potentially out and having two rookies back there, how much more of an onus do you have to have out there in terms of knowing what they're doing and, and getting them lined up? Yeah, I think uh, if that were to be the case, we have a great deal of confidence. They're two young guys that that uh, that work at it. That, that are sharp, uh, so that that certainly helps. Uh, but I think I certainly it, I will be uh, added emphasis on my part to make sure really just to communicate. I don't think it'll be so much uh, getting them lined up. I mean, that, that, they'll be good, but just over communicating in the noise, um, you know, from a protection standpoint or what route they have or all those kind of things, just it more so reminding peace of mind, hopefully to take that a little bit off of them so they can play fast. Uh, but uh, those two guys, they work hard. They, they enjoy it. Uh, they work at it, and um, you know, we'll. If that were to be the case, we'll we'll just have to they'll just have to roll and, and go. You have a, a long uh, losing skin against this team. How much you really is that? I mean, it depends where you start the streak. 
If we go way back, it's not, you know, so we can make stats say whatever we want. So um, <laughs> we, we, we kick off on Thursday. Um, this game, this, we'll, see, we'll see what happens on Thursday. Kind of each game, to me, stands alone. Uh, while I acknowledge that that's been the case, it's been a while. Uh, but I don't think, you know, there's guys in this, this locker room that have only played them one time. So and some that maybe not have played them any, they weren't playing in week one. So um, it's a new game, new week. It'll be a heck of a challenge. It'll be as loud as, it, as it's ever been. And, um, and we'll have to manage those things, plus a, plus a uh, really good football team. I think you embrace it. I mean, I think you embrace it, and you should be excited about it. I mean, these are the games. This is what these are the ones you you dream about when you're little. These are the ones you you, you talk about uh, in the off season, having a chance to play, uh, to keep your division uh, champ hopes alive, and and to you know get your spot in the postseason. So, um, and these are the games you, you want to be in, um, and we find ourselves in them uh, here. It's been it has been a long time. Um, but it's it's I, th- I think it's I think it's that you acknowledge that and you're excited and then you just got to go play. No, it's nothing more. We don't need more this week than we've had any other week. Just play, play, uh, play the way we play and and uh, and find a way. Do you guys embrace that role though of kind of being under the radar? And get, I mean, everybody's talking about the Rams and Chiefs and everybody, and you guys are ten and three and hardly any discussion. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, every guy probably different. I don't know that I pay that much attention to it either way um we know what type of team we have uh we got to keep going though you know i think it's the biggest thing you hear me talk about all week it's a week-to-week league we saw last week how crazy it was and you know we 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 start off uh this week 15 you know so who knows anything can happen but i I don't think those things uh really affect our guys at least not not that i know of you uh I tell you, Thursday night about midnight. I'll let you know. Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I think it's always a challenge physically the Thursday games, but I do think that in some ways it's a, it's a little bit of a mini buy on the back end. Uh, it kind of worked out schedule wise having a buy right after what we week seven or eight, and then here again here having this long weekend after this one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure guys feel differently. Uh, I do think from an emotional standpoint, it'll certainly affect affect that uh, weekend based on the outcome. If you had your druthers, though, would you rather have the Thursday night game early in the season or late now? I don't know. I don't know. Shoot, I don't know. I don't know that it matters. Um, you know, I think, again, it being in division, it seems like the league tries to do that. Obviously, the division games you see on Thursdays, uh, it does help a little bit. You're just more familiar. If it was an NFC opponent that we saw once every four years, it would be a little more of a challenge, at least just to get started. And that's not to say it's not a challenge. It's, we got, we'll be working right up until kickoff, uh, making sure we're ready to go uh, against the Chiefs. But it does help start the process. It's not finding, give me the depth chart. It's we know who's going to be where. Now how are we going to find a way to get first downs and score score touchdowns? What's your physical routine like as far as recovery in the short week? Like it more so than- uh, I, I think probably for a lot of guys it is. For myself, I, I, I feel good. You know, I, Thankfully, so far this year, I just haven't had anything really even linger Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to where I have even was in jeopardy of missing a practice or anything like that. So thankfully, uh, I, I, you know, I feel a little bit like it's Tuesday today as it is, but um, nothing, nothing uh, really lingering around. So um, I, think, I think your body, because of mentally what we know we have to get done, you, it just kind of, you got to go. So, How often do you do yoga? Uh, never. <laughs> you do normal types of cross therapy or any of those? I, I, I'm about as old school as it gets. I mean, maybe an ice pack every once in a while, but that's about it. So, so, the, mind, so the body kind of follows the mind? I, I, in, the, in some, I mean, to me it does. Again, I, some of these guys did a heck of a lot more than I did on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, I think it does – you know, because Thursday night we're going to ramp up, and I don't think anybody's going to say, "Man, I feel I don't feel good." You're going to, you get going, adrenaline gets going, and in that atmosphere, it'll be hard not to be ready to go. Talk about that atmosphere. I mean, I know you said it's going to be loud, but what's it like for you here? It's awesome. I mean, it's old school. It's old school NFL, and it's uh, you know passionate fans, and especially when they're having the success they've had in this you know last really five four or five year run they've had. They've won a lot of football games, so 
uh, it'll be awesome. I, I, I think it's it's awesome. I mean, I, you get an opportunity to play in these games. It'll be a little cool and uh, shoot. I, mean, I think it's 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 definitely a challenge because you manage in noise and all kind of things. But it's uh, it's also the kind of atmospheres you you love playing in. I mean, I, I think you, I, at least I always look at it. I mean, I've looked at it every day, probably five times a day since since Sunday's game. Uh, but not as a concern, like, what are we going to do? It's just kind of something you want to know how it affects maybe uh, whether it be how you're going to, what you're going to wear, um, with your gloves, no gloves, all those things. But uh, I think once the ball gets kicked off, you just deal with what you deal with. Um, so, and in the Midwest, I mean, I can't remember what year it was, 2008, I think. We warmed up and it was 60. And about 45 minutes later, it was 30. So, you never know. I mean, who knows what, what, what it'll be, 720 and kickoff. So, Andy Reid, when he came to the division, do you remember what your reaction was? Uh, do you have any thoughts on the job? He's awesome. He's an awesome coach. I mean, he's had a ton of success in this league, um, time in Philly, and obviously uh, – before that, you know, in Green Bay, I guess he was, and maybe San Fran, but then in, in, in obviously in KC, and I got to be around him a little bit at the Pro Bowl. Um, just class, class guy, coach, person, um, and obviously they've done a heck of a job. And, uh, you know, they've been having him there. Obviously they lose the offensive coordinator to Chicago uh, last year. They lost, uh, you know, Peterson, I guess, a few years before that to, to Philly. So they've had some change. He's been the constant. And then defensively, having, uh, you know, Bob Sutton there has been with him the whole time. So that continuity has really helped them schematically. Their, that foundation is, is, is set, you know. Uh, and I think that's certainly they've, they've kept a lot of good players. But that, that continuity has been good for them. So in terms of getting a jump on preparation, was this week easier maybe compared to last year with Dallas as far as a depth chart? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, no question, and uh, and then you just got to go. You know, Monday's got to be Monday's a full day. I mean, you're doing third down stuff and everything. You got to cram it all in on Monday, even looking at red zone. So, and then you use today to kind of let it all settle in and keep working. And then, uh, you know, in some ways it's more of a challenge because it's on the road. You know, you got to go rather than being here. In some ways, it can be a positive. You have a lot of time on a plane, a lot of time going all day Thursday to study our stuff. You know, at that point, you got to study your stuff. Make sure you can call everything in the huddle and get everything communicated that you need to get communicated. It's le- it becomes less about them and more about us once we get closer to Thursday. Bill, there's been some talk that Eric Berry came into the league this week. What has this battle been like over the years? Ago? He's a heck of a player. You know, I've seen him play since week one of last year, I guess. Uh, uh, awesome player. Just awesome football player. Obviously, a heck of a tackler in the run game and, and then can cover you and cover a lot of ground in the pass game. So, um, I don't think it changes our approach. Uh, it can't from from – how we go into the game, but he certainly would be a guy that we would know uh, if he was out there. You, you know where he is. He's that kind of player. Can we do that right here in the shade? I like the shade. No, 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 you're fine. I just. Yeah, we're in the same. 